Hey, my name is Josh Smith. I'm the president of Montana Knife Company, and today I'm gonna explain to you what Damascus steel is. Damascus steel is a layered combination of steel. And a lot of people don't quite understand what, what makes Damascus and what doesn't, and so I'm going to explain it here. Damascus steel is the combination of at least two different alloys of steel, two different types of steel, that are forge welded together to make one solid block of steel. You cannot take one type of steel, one bar of steel, and chop it up and stack it up or fold it on itself and make Damascus steel. That would be like taking red Play-Doh and rolling it out and folding it on itself over and over and over and all you're gonna end up in the end with is red Play-Doh. So this, for example, is 1080 high carbon steel. We can stack as much of this 1080 up and forge it together and we're still gonna just have 1080 steel. Now, if you take that red Play-Doh and you chop it up into a bunch of pieces and in between every layer of red, you place a layer of yellow Play-Doh, you now have alternating layers all the way up. And so, for example, if that Play-Doh was to never combine together into a brown nasty ball like it does, if it actually stayed separate, you would end up with layers. And that's where we bring, in this case, in 15 in 20 steel, which is a higher nickel content high carbon steel. So, for example, if we took a piece of 1080, and we took a piece of 15 and 20 and we laid that on top and then another piece of 1080. We now have alternating stack of steel here, as I will show you. We now have a stack of steel with a, every other layer is a different piece of steel. Now when you get into a higher level of making Damascus, you may actually alter these layers where you put a bunch of layers of the same thing together and then one layer of a different kind of steel, and then another bunch of layers, and what you end up with are, are different thicknesses of those layers in your blade. But for the sake of this very simple explanation, you can see we have different layers of steel mixed throughout that, and the 15 and 20 in this example is very thin, the, the 1080 is a little bit thicker. So now, how do we make all these separate pieces one bar of steel? Okay, so typically what we do is we'll take a welder and we'll just weld up the ends of this bar of steel on both sides to just hold these together. That's all that that's serving for. And then we'll weld some kind of a piece of rebar or junk steel or something on as a handle that we can hold, or you could hold on to it with a pair of tongs, forging tongs. Now, we need to heat the steel in a forge until it gets to its forge welding temperature. If we heat the steel up to 1800 degrees in the forge and we press it or hammer it, push on it, it is not going to bond properly and you're going to end up with flaws. This will actually all fall apart eventually. It does not get to that welding temperature. This steel has kind of a magic welding temperature of around 22 to 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. When you reach that temperature and you let that soak in that flame for a while and get that temperature all the way through this billet of steel, when you bring it out and you apply pressure with a hydraulic press or you hammer on it by either by hand or with a mechanical hammer of some sort, an air hammer or a trip hammer, that, that pressure and that strike of that steel will actually fuse this steel together and it will become one. So once you do that, you can draw this bar way out by forging it in a hammer or a press. And then you can chop this thing up and you can restack it. So let's talk about layer count for a second. This here has six layers. So for the sake of easy round numbers, let's just call it five. We're gonna drop this off. We now have five layers of steel. If I draw this bar out and I chop it into five pieces and I restack it all together, I now go from five to 25 layers because each piece has five layers, five separate layers in each piece. So now we forge weld that again together. We now have 25 layers. We draw that out. We chop it up into five more pieces and we restack it. We now have 125 layers. As you can see, you can start to build a layer count very quickly. Let's do that one more time. We've got 125 layers. We draw that bar out once more. 
we chop it up into five pieces, restack it, and now we have 625 layers and it all started from these little five pieces. So the more you do that, the tighter your layer count gets. And at that 600 layer mark, it really starts getting tight and it really gets like a grain of a tree in the end of this bar. It gets very difficult to actually see those layers because you literally have 625 layers in this tiny little space. So when you're making your own Damascus steel, a lot of times it's better to stay down in that 100, 200 layer count, 300 layers where you can actually see that and it's very visual for a customer to look at. As you can see here, it's a bit of an in-depth process. It actually can come all the way out. This is, a, this is a bar of Damascus steel I'm working on and we actually have twists and you can see kind of the cracks in the edge of this bar from twisting this bar up. This is a big thick bar. It's over a half inch thick. It's over an inch wide. I still have a lot of work to do on this once I decide what I want to make out of this piece of steel. But what's beautiful about this is the options are endless. You can make any kind of pattern you want out of Damascus steel. A bunch of the knives I've made, I've, I've put my own name in a bar of steel. Uh, in fact, I've got awards sitting here. This is a, an award from the Blade Show in 2001. I was just cleaning my uh, shop out the other night and found these for best Damascus at the Blade Show back in 2001, which is 22 years ago uh, when I was just a kid. So uh, you can do all kinds of cool things with Damascus steel. The only limitation is how creative your brain can be. It's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. It's a fun time uh, making that steel. And the Damascus steel goes all the way back to the old days. And quite frankly, the reason that they made Damascus back in the old days was you didn't just go buy a great big bar of steel and cut something out of it and throw the rest away. Maybe all you had laying around the shop were these pieces of steel, but you needed to make something this long. By forge welding these together and drawing them out, you can now make something this big out of this little stack of steel. It was a very efficient use of material uh, it was another way where you could, you could forge this and make a big curve. Maybe you're making a spring for your horse-drawn buggy. Uh, maybe you're making a sword. And you can do all of that out of a small stack of steel like this. So that's the explanation about what Damascus steel is. I encourage you to get online, do some more research. Check out the knives that I've built out of Damascus steel on my personal website, joshsmithknives.com. It's a really cool art form. These knives are collectible and they're gonna be around for thousands of years.